You like the lady with that mystic smile Is it only cause you're lonely Men have blamed you Men have blamed you Or is this that strange Mona smile Do you try to tempt the lover Mona Lisa Or is this the way you mend a broken heart? Many dreams have been brought to your doorstep. They just lie there. The Kingston Public Hospital was once regarded as the best hospital in the Caribbean. But in recent years, it has fallen on hard times. The hospital lies in the heart of the deprived inner city, where every year hundreds die in gang fights and domestic disputes. These programs tell the stories of the doctors who work in the war zone. It's my first duty day in the emergency department here at Kingston Public Hospital. I'm a little nervous and uh, just getting my stuff together, make sure I got my little surgical books and a few other references just in case I need to use them. I think everybody is nervous on their first duty night because you really don't know what to expect uh, and you don't know how many cases are going to come at any, at any one given time? I mean, you know, at Kingston Public Hospital, you can expect everything. Acid burns, ice picks, gunshot wounds, everything. JT is from Canada. When he qualifies, he wants to specialize in trauma care. I wanted to go someplace where I could get hands-on experience. The major hospitals which came up was Belfast, Beirut, Lebanon, and then of course Kingston Public came into play. Uh, you have to leave all your knives at the door over here. Alright. <laughs> Well, I think he's got somebody must have got a knife and uh, tried to cut him open. Excuse me, sir. Hello, sir. What happened now? Somebody tried to kill him. Somebody tried to cut him. Somebody tried to stab him. But uh, he managed to escape. So, but these don't. These look very superficial. You know. Just gotta make sure. He is you feel giddy at all? Uh, yeah. Did you pass out? Yeah. Did you black out? Uh -uh. Okay, all right. We'll give him some tetanus toxoid. We'll suture a few things up, and he'll be sent home. But you're not interested in how it's going to come to the end. I'd love to know, you know. Oh. But unfortunately, in oh. casualty, that's not a priority for us. Oh. I want to just make sure that he's well. What's the matter, sir? I'm a tetanus shot, What's that? Let's show this work, I do. Working for something for someone. All right, okay, don't worry about it. You uh, tell the police, all right? So any complaints they have, we tell them to tell the police, uh, and they will take it from there. What's he saying? Uh, basically, what he's trying to say is that uh, some people are trying to blackmail him, and um, I guess the story is pretty long, you know? And I got a lot of patients over there that I have to see. So he's all right, you know? I'll see you then later, all right? Okay. Station Ministry, no Kapotan Morning. And then later at 11.30... Consultant obstetrician Dr. Gordon is on a ward round with students. And the findings are the same. Now what about the contraction rate? Because if I see this page blank again when I have told you all that there are two things that you must know about labour and you must know when the contraction started and you must know what we are having. This does not give me any indication of what she is. Right, so her sister is not being... You haven't a sister because you haven't told me what the contractions are. Well, do you it. don't know what they are, so how do you know whether she's in active labor or not? 
the, it is something I have spoken to you on every time I appear. Well, just so tell me what she's supposed to be in so I'll know what you people Thank are you supposed to be. Doctor, well, start the doctor please, I am reading the chart. I don't want to know when you ordered it, I want to know when she got it. This doesn't make sense. It does not. I don't care whether they're ordered, doctor, haven't you got the point? How the ordering is going to help the patient? I understand, I agree. You're psychic Tuesdays, or something? I'm not. On Tuesdays, we don't have any lab service. If you know you have no flipping lab service and there's no reason, why not leave the lady till in the morning when you can get the results? You know all these things before. Downstairs, staff and patients begin the day with a service. Sharon White is 26 and about to have her second baby, but she's reluctant to tell the nurse who the father is. Something is missing here, man. The baby's father's name is not here. What's his name? Why are you putting him funny? You don't know his name. We know his name, but we now put him here funny. So you can't get yourself pregnant. No, me have a baby father, but I'm not a flex right, so I'm just not dealing with him. I'm just I already saw my baby and I'm my near man. I'm take care of myself. You're going to give the baby your name? There's a blood shortage, so all patients must find relatives to give blood on their behalf. But Sharon has a problem. Somebody to give blood for me, but the two persons who give blood for me, them, and them, them have the arm, um, the arm um, syphilis infection. Have the what? Syphilis. I'm going to be a father. Be a father in faith. That's right. Sharon's first child was stillborn. Now there's a chance that her second baby will have syphilis. Dr. Yeah. Gordon will keep a close eye on her. When your baby do? Probably when? When, sir. You sure about when your last period was? Or you're not so sure? Hmm? June, July. June, July. July, July. Oh, July. You sure about July? What time in July? You sure about the date? Too? Um, 16th. 16th of July. And did you have regular periods before? Yep. Where were you attending clinic in early pregnancy? Um, private doctor. So you have a letter? Yeah, particularly. Um. Mm -hmm. So how much visits you made today? No, no. When's the early? You mean like how early? Well, like two months after? Three months. Three months. Oh, that's early, early. And when you went to them that time, they said that your size looked about the size you should have been? Yeah, the doctor. I never did. I the doctor told me something The doctor told you, so you weren't able to tell him? Yeah. In other words, you didn't know you did. All right, let's forget about that. Did you have an ultrasound test, sir? No. So the truth of the matter is you don't know when your last period was. The doctor told you that, and it's so no, you know. No, 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 sir. Is that right? No, man. <laughs> no, we know that. We know that. Don't worry. 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 Don't Three hours into JT's shift, the first real emergency arrives. It's a young man with knife wounds. The man's throat has been ripped open with a knife. He's also been stabbed in the chest. He's losing a lot of blood and the throat wound is making it difficult for him to breathe. 
Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, hi, who's out there here? I'm calling from Casualty. We have an unknown male. Uh, I've just sent his uh, sample to you right now. We need uncross match for him right away, please. Sister, things like test tube. They were putting a test tube. There's no witnesses, no nothing. We really don't know what has happened. Uh, he's not stable, so we're going to try to get him to the theater as soon as we can. His chances don't look great. You know, I mean, he's lost a lot of blood, and we have to take it from here. You know, so hopefully he pulls out. We've got a long ways to go yet. It's 20 minutes since JT requested blood. It still hasn't arrived. The patient's heart has begun to give out. Well, he lost a lot of blood volume, and finally he succumbed to that. And the sad thing is, um, we have no idea who he is, no idea who to inform, no next of kin, um, you know, nothing. Nothing at all. He's got two major uh, major slashes. His throat is completely cut, exposing all the structures, and plus he's got a. Um, another stab wound to the right side of his lung also so what well, we were hoping though you know something positive would come about but it's unfortunate sad you know and that's all i can say at all. You have to buy that from the pharmacy, all right? Okay. If you have any problems, you come back. Okay, thank you. All right, okay, good night. Yeah. You just heard me talking to this guy, right? And now you're wondering. No, 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 it's no problem, all right? Uh, it's going slowly, it's fine. All right? Okay. Work has to go on. I mean, 
there are there are other patients here that are now as important as as our other unfortunate patient. Even if I wanted to allow myself to think about his family, to think about Oh, I just can't. I really can't. Otherwise, there's no way any one of us here, from the nursing staff all the way up, uh, could function. Uh, later on, I'm sure I'll dwell on that. But right now, it's like I try to turn it off and continue on. Because it's a daily occurrence. It's not an isolated case. I mean, I'm hoping that this is it for tonight. But uh, I doubt. You know? Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. Shabbat dreams, wounded hearts, and broken thoughts. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. <laughs> okay. Are you proud? Eh? Are you proud? Yeah, we're proud. I can't even call her dead. And almost be a mother up and I go home with them baby. And then I'm dead. I saw the baby mother them not go home neither. And them end up dead. Yeah, we just give thanks and praise to God and you come at them places. And you go home back with your baby. And with yourself too. I mean, I they ask the nurse, and the nurse, what kind of baby me have, you know, I just started to thank Jesus. Why I love you so much, because so when you can see them pain when we go through, I tell you, man, I'm going to God alone, could I deliver me out of that, that pain. So what kind of life do you hope that he'll have? Nice life, like anybody else. It good food and sleep and then he can go to school and all that. <laughs> Norma Robinson and her family have arrived in Kingston from the countryside. Her nephew Clinton has disappeared and she heard a rumor that he'd been taken to the hospital. She wants to see the body of the unknown male who died in casualty. Norma was able to identify the body. It's her nephew, Clinton Wiglin. He'd been a street trader. His throat was slashed in an argument over where he could set up store. He was 28. Sharon and the baby have come to see Dr. Chateau, the consultant pediatrician. How are you? Do you know why you're here? Huh? Did they okay. explain to you? Mm. What did they explain to you? Um, that they found, they found, um, the police and the right. baby can catch it. Right, absolutely. If he does have it, it can cause lots of problems. The, the, he might not grow very well or he can have all kinds of brain problems later on. So we have to know what it is so we can treat it. And if we leave it untreated, then it can cause problems. Lots and lots of problems could even cause him to die. Yeah. I should get the blood test back by where we know Friday. By Monday I'll have it back. So I need to speak with you on Monday with him and then we'll decide whether he needs treatment or not.
Oh, oh, mother man to rat, man. But the woman called that. Well, the criminal let me down. No Policeman sent me and no I'll protect you. And he'll tell me 500 bumble cards. JT is beginning to find his feet in casualty. Okay, you said she was acting strange? Yes. What do you mean, acting strange? What um, was she doing? Insane. Stated that she was going to burn down the house. Okay, why don't you bring her to the room over there, okay? Okay. Uh -huh. Very rarely does a push come to a shove here. A push here comes to a stabbing, comes to acid burns, comes to um, the other extreme. But push never comes to shove, never, not here. I remember, I was thinking that it's gonna be a nice beach somewhere, some place to unwind. Um, I never expected this. When I came, I saw barbed wire. And I thought, surely this can't be the hospital. And when I drove in, I saw all these military people with, with machine guns and automatic rifles. And I thought, geez, surely this can't be KPH. And it was KPH. It doesn't really look like a hospital from the outside. It looks more like a, a war zone. You see all these massive cuts, abrasions, wounds, chop wounds to the head, uh, half of the arm literally dangling, uh, nerves severed. Uh, oh, it's just, it's just incredible. You do become fatigued, you know. Uh, to the point where you go, oh no, not another gunshot, oh geez, another stabbing. You know, it, it becomes really tiring. Good morning, how are you? Good. Can I have a seat for me? How are you? Good, good. How's the baby doing? Fine. Yeah, any problems? Is latching on well? Good. All right. Don't remember we had um, spoken on Friday about the problem with your syphilis and your treatment, and we wanted yeah. to make sure that the baby was was covered, and that we wanted to know whether the baby had the disease, and if he had the disease, we needed to start treatment. Yeah. But I have some good news for you today. The baby's test has come back showing that there's no evidence of syphilis in the baby. So that's pretty good news. That's comforting, that's comforting. Great, so the young man has finished feeding on one breast. Yes, all right, you can tickle his feet a little bit if you want to get him started again. Or just put the breast in his mouth. But he seems to be full. Yeah, he just does one at a time. Yeah, I'm that all away. Yes, yes. day in the emergency department here at Kingston Public Hospital. I'm a little nervous and uh, just getting my stuff together, make sure I got my little surgical books and a few other references just in case I need to use them. I think everybody is nervous on their first duty night because you really don't know what to expect uh, and you don't know 
how many cases are, go are going to come a day? Arm is these that strange moan of smile. Do you try to tend the lava, Mona Lisa? Are is this the way you mend a broken heart? Many dreams have been brought to your doorstep. They just lie there. The Kingston Public Hospital was once regarded as the best hospital in the Caribbean. But in recent years, it has fallen on hard times. The hospital lies in the heart of the deprived inner city, where every year hundreds die in gang fights and domestic disputes. These programs tell the stories of the doctors who work in the war zone. Men have blamed you. Men have blamed you. 